All right, so I'm going to walk you guys through a GM programming process from the beginning here. Uh, this is a follow-up to that PO601 video. Uh, finally got a chance to pull some of the clips together from it. This was my second programming event. Uh, SPS has changed, so this is the old SPS system, but basic steps still apply. A couple warnings. Windows 10, uh, read through there for your information, and then we're going to go to our SPS system. All right, uh, a couple notes before you start. You should be able to pause and read that. It's just proper Java installed, whichever number, run. And then we are not using Tech 2, so we just skipped through that Tech 2. Uh, we're going to go through, select our J2534 device, in this case, Snap on Pass Through Pro 4. Follow the prompts. So we're going to plug it into the vehicle first, fumble around a little bit. All right, and then throw our USB in. All right, so that's it. Connect J2534 device, and we're going to select our vehicle. Two thousand six Colorado. Confirm our VIN is correct. And we're going to choose ECM, PCM. And replace our controller. So I'm going to hop out there and pop the new. All right, so now we're going to go through our timer. I, I lost the little section of video that shows the initial program press program button but uh it's been running for probably about five ten minutes at this point so we just sit there and we wait uh, i mean you don't don't play with the radio don't start tapping on the brake pedal jerking the steering wheel all that fun stuff flipping headlights on and off we just want to sit there and let it let it do its thing so super exciting stuff uh the cool part about all this is gm is Pretty forgiving. Uh, I think I said already this is the second programming event I had done at this point. Uh, as of uploading this video, I've done about 25 to 30 just GMs. I've done a couple Fords and some other stuff as well. But pretty forgiving. Uh, only person more forgiving, I would say, is John Deere. Uh, they don't even have us hook battery maintainers or anything up. You just hit a button and about... 45 seconds to a minute later and your software is updated and you're good to go but if you're just getting into uh j2534 programming or programming in general gm seems to have the shallowest learning curve so to say and it's uh very forgiving you don't have to worry so much about breaking a module out immediately uh there are certain uh, vehicles like the 06, I believe it is, Trailblazers, that have you perform some additional steps. It should tell you an SPS about them before programming, but I would recommend always checking your service information for proper programming procedures. So in this case, the little dinger uh, just went off. So that to me signified it was done, but we're not going to hop ahead. I mean, we're going to wait for the See, we have our VTD light, our vehicle theft deterrent light on. We'll deal with that next, but there we go. Action completed. It'll give you a warranty number. It'll give you some additional information about what you may or may not have to do after a programming event. So we're going to go to our J2534 toolbox. Uh, this is a snap-on pass-through Pro 4, which is basically a Drew Tech 
I forget what it is now, Kardak 3 Plus or something along those lines, but we choose our pass-through device, which we already registered with it. And it's got some options that links you out to OEM websites for J2534. It's got a code reader built in. So we're going to read our DTCs. Our PO315 is our crank sensor relearn. Uh, so we'll have to do that. That's a pretty standard procedure. We can do it through the toolbox, if I remember correctly, or almost every scan tool I've seen has the capability of doing that. You just start it up, foot on the brake, and hit the gas up to fuel cut, and then it'll register the crank sensor variations. So here we're pulling our uh, vehicle and vehicle data, all our calibration numbers and whatnot, and right from this screen we're gonna print that out uh, two copies actually one copy for me and my records one copy for the customer just so they have it and so yep pop that out and then we're just gonna take a <coughs> quick look here they also have our check our monitor status I mean obviously we just put a new ECU in it, we're going to have to go through and reset all our readiness monitors, test drive it, make sure there's that this truly did fix it in this case, the ECU was the fault, and I can tell you, confirmed fix, so, clear DTCs, you can do that as well, I mean, we're still going to have to deal with the crank sensor relearn, so, and then one other thing, while I was in there, I opted to do the VTD learn so that's our vehicle theft so we just click on that it's pulling its data and then it gives me two options there one for domestic and one for everything else so we're gonna pull our domestic once I click on the right one there it'll give you a little description in the bottom of the screen there and uh, sometimes you got to look at RPO codes or whatever they're in the glove box on most of the SUVs and uh, trucks and then they're also down um, in the trunk I believe it is on most of the cars so we click that start the process it's a 15 minute process if I remember right yep and a little countdown, countdown timer will go uh, we're down to whatever it is, 10 minutes at this point. And then one minute remaining. So we're looking, our light's still on. What we're going to want to do is we want to make sure that light goes out. I mean, we'll let the program finish itself out. But if we don't do this, uh, there's a manual way of doing it, but I was already in there. Um, look it up in service information. If I don't do this, I can sit there and crank all day long, and this thing will never fire. And then you'll be sitting there, staring at your hands, wondering what you did, and did you just break out a module? No, you just got to relearn the, the theft deterrent on the new ECU. So, should be almost done here. We'll get a little ding-ding, and our light is out. And you'll be good to go from there. Uh, let it finalize itself out. <clears throat> Don't shut the key off until this screen is already cleared out and it gives you a completed message. Because it's still finalizing everything to some degree or another here. Uh, same with any programming event. Follow the props. Don't get anxious. Don't think you know better. Don't think it's frozen. Give it a chance to do its thing. <laughs> So we'll go through and we got it running and we'll kick it back on and fires right up and then the check engine lights still on because we still got to do the crank relearn but there's your slap together GM programming procedure uh, hopefully I'll be putting up some more programming procedures soon a little more in-depth and better <laughs>